Today we are going to talk about climate change and specifically sustainable energy resources. So didn't we all hear heard about climate change? Didn't we all here have been hearing a lot about so many conferences are being held about climate change? So what is climate change? Well, in general, climate change is include both global warming driven by human emission of greenhouse gases and the resulting large scale shifts in weather patterns. Well, to talk about this in more details, we all here in this hall know or heard about the flooding crisis which happened last autumn in uh, Khartoum, capital of Sudan. So these flooding crises are happens due to emissions of greenhouse gases and large scale shifts in weather patterns. So these uh, shifts in weather patterns significantly threaten food production and rise the sea level, uh, which increase the risk of catastrophic flooding, such as we have seen last autumn in Khartoum, our capital of Sudan, Bluff Sudan. So, to, in the same context, uh, a report from UN Environment Program here in Sudan. But firstly, some of you might asking how this climate change happened. How this climate change happen? Well, uh, generally, it is caused by the emission of greenhouse gases. So what, are, what is these gases or what are these greenhouse gases? So one of them, nitrous oxide, methane, and more specifically, carbon dioxide. This is our problem here. The problem is it stays so long time in the atmosphere, but definitely this is associated with other, uh, with other human behaviors, such as random trees cut off. Uh, in the same context, as I said, a report from UN Environment Program uh, in Sudan here says that bio mass supplies 56% of energy demand here in Sudan. And fuel wood consumption range from 15.5 million cubic meters to 25.7 million cubic meters, rising almost to 30 cubic million cubic meters by 2030. So to, to talk, let, it, let me talk about this in more details. For example, me myself, in our home, we are consuming three shawal bag of charcoal every month. And in a social media survey I met here in, a, in South Darfur State in a group called Nialatna, uh, uh, over 100 percent, 80 or 90 percent of the participants, they voted on the poll, and I, as you see here, some of them commented, and someone, some of them uh, participated on the poll. And so, 90 percent of these participants were mainly depend on charcoal as a main energy source for cooking. So. Behind this huge consumption of charcoal or fuel wood, so imagine the huge efforts that behind this huge consumption. Imagine how many children are not in the schools or 
they are not in schools or they dropped schools because uh, they go maybe to collect fuel wood or work on charcoal production. So, and this is also followed by the damage that happens to our environment here, for example, in Darfur. The huge damage that happened to our environment here. So imagine these efforts and this huge conception. The real question is here, me and you might ask, how to put an end for this climate change? Uh, this is a sample for a charcoal, as you see here in a canoe. Uh, how to put an end for this climate change? And since there is a 17 of the sustainable development goals are waiting to be achieved, and we are still practicing harmful uh, behaviors on the environment, such as random trees cut off. How to put an end for this climate change? Well, here is the thing. Biofuel, biofuel is a sustainable energy source. And in the context of biofuel, it's specifically biogas. What is biogas? Well, a biogas is the fermentation of a bio uh, mass in a system or uh, environment is absent of oxygen. But this biogas idea, is it new? Well, the answer is not. Actually, the biogas idea, it has been used since the 1850s by the Indians and the Britishes. And but the question is, why now? And how we relate to this idea? Well, uh, during making our first experimental biogas unit, me and my colleague, uh, we collected some data about the number of cows in South Darfur State here, uh, and compared to the total number of cows in Sudan. Uh, as you see here in the graph, the number of cows in South Darfur states and it is localities. For example, let us take locality of Toulouse. Toulouse has approximately 1.8 million cow, followed by Edel Firsan and Kaz, both have approximately 1 million cow. Of course, some of you might, might ask him why cows, right? <laughs> okay, uh, why cows? Because cows manure or cow dunks are mainly or the main source to produce biogas. We use cow dunks to produce biogas. Why? Because cow dunks or cow manures uh, contain a bacteria that called mesogenesis, which you produce methane, which is biogas. So, these, uh, with all these resources, not to mention there is other resources such as for the scraps and uh, uh, agricultural waste, and most importantly, our hot sun here in Sudan. So, in the context of choosing the right temperature, actually, when we made our uh, when we made our system, our humble system as you see here, it's just a simple barrel. Uh, the temperature was, uh, when we made our system, it was in autumn. And we all know here, autumn in Sudan, and specifically Darfur region, is cold. So the temperature was in the range of uh, 21 to 25 at night, and 25 to 35 a day. And our system started to produce gas since day three. So imagine this. With all these resources, imagine that we implemented only 50 biogas units of a size of seven meter cube. And a biogas unit of a size of seven meter cube produce a gas in the rate uh, of 
five to six meter cube per day. So by the simple calculations, we would reserve 349 ton of charcoal per a year. Imagine this huge amount of charcoal that we would reserve. And from a book called, uh, uh, from a book called this, by, uh, Digestion of Bio Waste in Developing Countries by Sandek, Department of Water and Sanitation, says that normal biogas stoves consume 400 to, fi uh, to 500 biogas liters per hour. And a one meter cube of biogas can be replaced by one, or can be replaced by 3.2 kilogram of charcoal. So ladies and gentlemen, imagine with me this. So if we implemented those 50 biogas units, so imagine the number of trees that would be saved from cutoff. Imagine the methane reduction that would happen and how our environment will be here in Darfur specifically. So ladies and gentlemen, by adopting this technology, biogas technology, uh, here is a, a picture for us. We are trying to make a experiment. This is our gas, as you see here, that's the flame. Uh, by adopting this technology, the biogas technology, we would make a huge progress in our environment, not only here in our environment, but also a progress that will go in alignment with the sustainable development goals from sustainable agriculture and job opportunities which by creating nurseries, for example, by using the digestate that will result from the biogas units, and also a healthy environment, and most importantly, healthy environment. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Biogas as an approach for environmental reform. Thank you.